This will be our continuation of the of the accounting discussion in business finance, and I'll share a screen for for the remaining parts of that discussion. So these are the contents of that discussion. So let's try to also have a review. We went into knowing how the accounting equation works. So you have here assets should be equal to the sum of, liar, of your liabilities and owner's equity. The double entry bookkeeping tells us that we add something from one side, from the asset side, we must also add something to this side to keep it balanced. Like example is, if we increase cash, which is an asset, we might have to increase note payable, which is a liability. So the basic equation, a basic accounting equation remains in balance. So you have this example, 500 for assets, 500 for liabilities. Then concept of debit and credit are also, concepts of debit and credit are also introduced. Then you have, we've mentioned the concept of a normal balance. Please turn your camera on, Nathan and Nicole. Turn your camera on. Show your pieces. In the accounting equation, the asset is on the left side, while liabilities and equities are on the right side. An asset, therefore, has a debit normal balance, while a liability or an owner's equity will have a credit normal balance. So this is a sample of the T account of the T-account analysis. So then, then there's also a mentioning of real and permanent accounts, real or permanent accounts. We also mentioned nominal or temporary accounts. So this is a sample. Familiar of this table, we had this kind of, this is similar to what I created for you in Microsoft Excel. For your major exam, you'll just create something like this. So before you create this, it is highly suggested that you finish the journal entries first. By finishing the journal entries, you would know how many assets are included and how many liabilities and owner's equity account titles are also included. You don't want to create this table only to find out later on that you'll add one more column for assets. You don't want it to be created as though for the assets column, you only have two areas only to find out that there are actually three four five or six nominal accounts we have expense accounts and we have revenue accounts look it looks like this now it's expanded this is an expanded version of it like let's try to examine this on march 1 medical services to clients have been provided so provide medical services to clients for cash this recognizes a debit of cash and a credit of service revenue. On March 2, paid rent for the month. 3,000, will this be added to 35 or deducted? Deducted. Deducted, correct. Because the payment of rent for that month involved the release of cash. If this, if 3,000 here, wait, where's the month? If 3,000 here is going to be deducted from 35, the 3,000 for expenses will also be deducted from owner's equity. Then on March 2, another thing happened, which is the payment of an advertising expense. One eighth will be deducted from 35, and then one eighth will also be deducted from owner's equity. Let's go to March 6. Purchase office equipment on account 12,300. On March 6, you added this amount for office equipment. You added this to assets. And in the same way, because of the double entry bookkeeping system, we are adding another amount, uh, this same amount, to the liabilities column. We have to re reflect 12.3 here to maintain the balance between assets and the sum of liabilities plus owner's equity. And the rest follows. If journalized, those transactions in March would look like this. 
So the accounting cycle, we, we start this afternoon with the accounting cycle. Wait, Nicole disappeared from the call. Hello, Nicole. Nathan, what did you do? The accounting cycle works this way. It starts with the identification of whether a transaction is accountable or can be quantified and ends with a post-closing trial balance. This post-closing trial balance is already cleared of any form of adjustment. So the accounting cycle begins with the analysis of a business transaction for a while. Let me get it. We need to be very careful when it comes to reading or examining transactions and knowing they, whether they should be recorded in the books of the business. Just like what we mentioned earlier in Fundamentals of ABM 1, an event in that business or in the life of the people involved, involved in that business may not necessarily be recorded in the books of the business. If it has nothing, if it, if it does not affect the life of the business as, as well as its properties, then it will not be reflected in the records. Once these transactions have been identified to be worth recording, we put them in the journal. Next would be transactions will be posted on the ledger. And there are two types of ledgers. You have a general ledger and a subsidiary ledger. General ledgers are summaries of different subsidiary ledgers. Like for instance, you have their sample, accounts receivable, but you can also divide accounts receivable to two subsidiary, sub, uh, subsidiary ledgers. One may be named after A. Arania, uh, sorry, A. Rania, and the other one is from X. Campos which means that you have recognized a receivable from A. Rania and another receivable is recognized from X. Campos. The general ledger totals the amount of all of your receivables. That is why the general ledger there has a value of 100,000. 25,000 coming from A. Rania, 75 coming from X. Campos. After the preparation of the ledger, we proceed with the making of an unadjusted trial balance. The unadjusted trial balance is one that is not yet reflected with any adjustment, especially when it comes to expenses, supplies, and income that has not yet been earned against income that has already been earned. These are the adjustments that we have to look, at, to look after of. For instance, no. On the first, first day of the month, you purchased supplies totaling to 6,000 pesos. And then sometime, perhaps on the 13th of that month, 2,500 of these supplies have already been consumed. 2,500 worth of supplies has already been consumed. The amount that has been consumed count as an expense already so what you have left is an amount of supplies considered as assets valued at 3.5 because the 2.5 has already been consumed the 2.5 counts as supplies expense while the remaining 3.5 remains as the well the 3.5 value remains as the asset for supplies the, uh, this is what we refer to by the adjustments. But for now, in the, in the fourth step, after the posting of the transactions on the ledger, the unadjusted trial balance has yet to be, to be created. Once you have made the unadjusted trial balance, you proceed with adjustments. And of course, you have to put these adjustments on journal entries. Once you have done this, reflect the journal entries on the adjusted trial balance. You'll do necessary reductions. You'll, you'll do computations of how much of a receivable is yet to be collected, how much has already been obtained. 
Then you prepare the financial statements. In terms of the financial statements, oh, I think. Uh, let, let me skip. There, there we go. This is a sample, by the way, of the general ledger. It's here, people. This is the general ledger. Then A. Rania is here. X. Campos is on the other side. The total of 25 plus 75, which is 100, is this value is recorded under the general ledger for accounts receivable. Then uh, we proceed. Let's make it quick to reach the financial statements. Uh, these are the items that will have to be considered in the adjustments. Accruals, prepayments, if you have prepaid expenses, to compute how much of that prepaid expense has already been covered or used up. Like when it comes to prepaid insurance, when it comes to prepaid rent. So if you do prepaid rent, that's good for four, five months. Then you'll have to account for, like after the first month, you'll have to compute how much of the prepaid rent is accounted as an asset and how much of it has been turned into an expense. Then depreciation and amortization expense. Take for instance, you have your car. You have a service car or a service vehicle or, a, or an office equipment. These non-current assets ex are expected to depreciate in the passage of time. So you'll have to, of course, compute. Depreciation will have to be computed, especially when it comes to a point where, so as for you to be ready, when it comes to the point where the business has to be has to be liquid with all of its assets, meaning be ready to convert these assets into cash. Then you have allowance for uncollectible accounts. While you have recognized accounts receivable, one should the business should be ready to compute how much of these receivables have already been collected, meaning received in cold cash, and how much is how much is still to be received in cold cash? Then the adjusted trial by. Then we have our financial statements. Here we have our financial statements. Once the the trial balance has already been adjusted, we can then be more or less ready to prepare the financial statements. These financial statements are the statement of financial position, statement of profit or loss, and the statement of cash flows. Once that's done, you proceed to the making of the closing entries. Upon closing, so these are the things that need to be considered. Revenues exceed expenses during account of retained earnings will increase. The reverse is true, which means that if the expenses exceed revenues, the retained earnings will decrease. Revenue account balances are transferred to an account called income summary or sometimes profit or loss summary. Income summary will be reflected in the income statement. Expen expense account balances are also transferred to the income summary account. And the balance of the income summary, net, net income or net loss, is transferred to the owner's capital. Once that's done, the post-closing trial balance is created. And then this is prepared to test if the debit balances equal the credit balances once closing entries are considered. So these are your basic financial statements. You have the income statement, the statement of owner's equity, the balance sheet, statement of cash and the statement of cash flows. We begin with the income statement, which is also known as the profit or loss statement, also known as the statement of comprehensive exam or the statement of income. It is a summary of the revenue and expenses of a business for a specific period of time, such as a month or a year. And so it looks like this. Please look at the necessary labels. You have here the name of the business, the name of the financial statement, and the period by which that financial statement has been made. On this side, you'll find fees earned. Generally, you can just label this as service income. I'm referring to this side. Wait. Can I do annotate? I can annotate. 
Okay, wait, ha, wait, wait. I'm referring to this side. You can call that service income or service revenues. And then to be deducted from it are expenses. So you have all of these expenses. Then you can use for this part, you can use any of the words profit or loss depending on what the computation yields. If this value yields a positive number, then you will recognize a profit. If what came out is a negative value, a negative number, then it is to be recognized as loss. That is why the income statement is also referred to as the profit or loss statement. And that value computed on this area will be used as the income summary value. Please take note of this because I'll ask you later on to make a sample of this with the transactions given to you. We proceed. Oh my God. How do we? Clear, 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 clear. Clear. Oh, no, no, no. Clear all joints. Okay, there. The statement of owner's equity, known as well as the statement of changes in equity, and it reports the changes in the owner's equity over a period of time. It is prepared after the income statement because the net income or net loss must be reported in that statement. Similarly, it is prepared before the balance sheet since the amount of owner's equity at the end of the period must be reported on the balance sheet. Because of this, this statement is often viewed as connecting link between the income statement and the balance sheet. So how will it look like? This. And again, wait, let me annotate. Uh, annotate. For this area, you have the name of the business, name of the financial statement, and the period when that financial statement has been prepared for. And then it begins with capital. Look, capital is here. And this capital is at the beginning of a particular period, a particular month or a particular year. This is on a monthly basis though. So this is at the start of the month. So you have here Adam Sileni declared capital at, up, at an amount of $80,000 on May 1, 2009. This area, additional investment by owner during the year, tells you that within that month, you know, within that year, sorry, within that year from May 1 to May, May 1, 2009 to May 1, 2010, this is until 2010, the business owner placed an additional investment in the value of 50. Then net income is 55,550. Where did this value come from? Oh, wait. From here. Profit. See, this profit. is the value, net income or the profit, the profit that has been computed from the income statement. This yields then an initial value, an initial total of 105, 550. That's the additional investment plus the net income. From it, you will deduct withdrawals. Familiar with that? Withdrawals, Adam Sileni of 30,000. This now tells you that from May 1, 2009, there is an increase in owner's equity at a value of 75,550. Therefore, at the end, of that year, 
which is in this line, there is now a new value of owner's equity, which is 155,550. This really shows a change of owner's equity. There is an increase. But of course, if the value here is negative, you will say that it's a decrease in owner's equity. Questions? Next financial statement is the balance sheet, known as the statement of financial position. This provides information regarding the liquidity position and capital structure of a company as of a given date. It must be noted that the information found in this report are only true as of a given date. It shows the assets, liabilities, and owner's equity as of a specific date, usually at the close of the last day of a month or a year. And this is how it will look like. Look, oh. In this, in this structure, you have all of the assets. This is the only liability per record, accounts payable. And this value of owner's equity is taken from where? Where the uh, owner's equity in a balance sheet? Equity. Uh. Not from the balance sheet. The la this value of 155 550 can be obtained from nothing. I don't know what happened. Statement. There. It comes from here. The statement of owners the changes of owners' equity. Statement of owners' equity. There. And then we total liabilities and owner's equity to arrive at 167,750. And then for assets, 167,750. This again is the goal of the accounting equation. Assets would be equal to the sum of liabilities and owner's equity. Before last week, or no, last week or two weeks ago, I already emphasized it that the accounting equation is really manifested by the balance sheet. Being able to equate the assets to the sum of liabilities and owner's equity is the goal of the balance sheet as well as of the accounting equation. I'll remove the marks. Here's the statement of cash flows, the last financial statement. It reports a company's cash inflows and outflows for a period. So if we talk about inflows and outflows, we're referring to the money received and the money, the, sorry, not money, the cash received and the cash released by the business. This is used by managers in evaluating past operations and in planning future investing and financing activities used as well by external users such as investors and creditors to assess a company's profit potential and ability to pay its debt and pay dividends. Especially this. Remember in a corporate structure, dividends can only be declared if there's... Can you declare dividends if there's no cash? Enough cash. Correct. There needs to be enough cash, a surplus of cash, before dividends will be declared and shared distributed among members of a corporate structure. And this is how it's going to look like. This is the statement of cash flows, which has categories from operating activities, investing activities, financing activities. So when it comes to operating activities, this would pertain to cash received from customers, deducting cash for payments of expenses and then for investing activities in the event that the business tried to add and in add some form of capital to the business like in this case the purchase of land land becomes a capital and its purchase involved cash so it's declared there 
cash flows from financing activities received from owner as investment deducted by withdrawals. And then you have the net decrease in cash during a year. Why is it called a net decrease? Because the computation yielded a negative value. This $19,000 is added to the cash at the start of the year, which is May 1, 2009. Since it's a fault, it's uh, 72,050 is a positive number and 19,000 is a negative number. Subtraction follows. Therefore, at the end of the year, at April 30, 2010, cash totaled or amounted to 53,050. Now, Nathan, because you submitted this to me, you don't have a copy of it anymore. This familiar with this. Try to make the income statement. Try to make the hello, Nicole. Sir, I, I thought I thought you're not there. Try to make the income statement for the transaction involving Voltaire Arzadon. Nathan, you don't have a copy of this one, oh? Nicole, can you please send a picture of the transactions to Nathan? Yes, sir. I don't know. I think I can do it. Later. <laughs> Later this time, no? Nathan, I'm sending the, a picture of the transactions to your Facebook page, uh, Facebook Messenger account. Can you see it already? Sir, post mo ba yung recording at to? Yeah, the recording is already being posted. Uh, yeah, the recording will be posted soon. Why? It's all right. It's all right. So that you'll, you'll be able to capture the contents of the parts that you missed. I'll really, I'll really post this. Yes. So Nathan, you have there the copy of the transactions. So... Would you want to see your your journal entries, Nathan? Because Nicole already has her journal entries there. I'll, let me take a picture of the journal entries so that you will not have to make a journal a, a set of journal entries again. Great. Now make the income statement. Let's start with that. Nathan, I sent it to you already. So what are involved in the in the income statement? Revenue expenses. Go. Put the labels in terms of the name of the business, uh, the name of the financial statement, as well as the, the date by which the financial statement is actually being made for. The period that financial statement is going to be used. Uh, used. What's the name of this business? So are you, Nathan, are you making it already? You're not. You're just looking at the camera.
I'm look. Uh, I'm just doing it on, on the on the table. Ah no. What expenses are involved in this transaction of Arzadon? How many expenses are involved? There are. How many expenses are involved? How many? There are only three. What year is sir na business? Just what ignore year? the not, just ignore the year. Don't forget to double rule the final amount. I'm done. Where's Nicole? Nicole disappeared again. Service income. I wait. There's there are four. There are four. Sorry, there are four expenses involved. My glares. What is this writing? I can clearly see. So those are the three types of bottles, five of bottles, 
metallic bar, two metals joined on each other, two metallic bars, two metals, and the unique bar of metal is one man. Nathan, net profit or net loss? Hello, Nicole. Your audio is not connected yet to the call, Nicole. Nicole. Nathan, net profit, net loss. You don't need to make a long income statement because the transactions you had for this paper did not have so many accounts to be included in the income statement. Where is Nicole? Nathan, done? You, you don't need to mute yourself, Nathan. You can just unmute yourself. Anyway, there are only three of us in this call. Profit statements or profit, like, positive. Positive value, correct. And so, what's the value, Nathan? 21,650. Again, again. 21,650 pesos. 21? Oh. Are you sure there's just 21? Wait, wait, wait. Wait. I wait, wait. Mm -mm -mm. You, read, you look at your journal and carefully look at the transactions that involve service income. How many transactions there, Nathan, involve service income? Service income? Yes. How many? What dates talk of service income? September 13. 13. 16. 16. Oh, yeah. Alay, go. Atulo, deh. 
Um, 27. 27, correct. See, there are three accounts there of service income. One from September 13, the other one is on September 16, though it's still at the accounts receivable. It's still going to be recognized as service income. And for September 27, income was received in the form of cash and a partial... Uh, as, sorry, income is recognized in two methods. One is pay me, paying it in, in uh, partially in cash. So the business recognizes still a receivable because partial pay, a, par a portion only of the total amount has been accepted in, in cold cash. Forty-one six fifty, sir. Correct. You have forty-one thousand six hundred fifty. <laughs> So look at what I have done here, Nathan. I don't know if you could see it. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> never mind, never mind. I'll, I'll lift my laptop. I'll lift my laptop. Sure. You don't have to twist your head. Can that be seen? Mm. So look. So we have here the name of the business, the name of the financial statement, property. Then the, yeah, the name of the business is property appraisals. It's in the transaction record. Oh. Then you have for the month of September. The paper does not present any year, so we can just leave it there. And then look at the format that I'm using. This is my kind of um, income statement. Here's the service income. Below that, I place a label ah, less to, to always remind me that the expenses are to be deducted. Next to that, Nathan, is the placement now of the amount. So service income will be placed somewhere here, somewhere farther, because on the next column, I'll have to put in all of the expenses. And then... I'll total the expenses. Look at the total, Nathan. The total of the expenses is placed below the value of service income. If you have noticed, I'm doing the op mathematical operations in columns. For this column, I'm adding all the expenses. For this column, I'm going to deduct expenses to service income. And so it yields a value of 41,650. And that's correct, our profit. Since the value is positive, it counts as a profit, not a loss. I don't know where any call is. Statement of changes in equity, Nathan. Statement of changes in equity. I'll erase my answer for a while. And I still have to wait for the table to dry up before I start writing. I'll get to my LQ, sir. Yeah. Feel, by the way, for business finance or accounting, always be ready with your calculator because we are dealing with larger numbers here. Nicole, hi, Nicole. Hello, sir. Sir, so what's the answer? 41,650. 41,650? Yes. Ang tama ko lang is 650, sir. Huh? Don't tell me you got the 21,650. No, sir. What did you get? 69,650. I think there's something wrong. Um, there are three. Ah! 30,000, a joke. September 13, service income is 20. Double check. 
Service income on September 13 is 20,000. On September 16, service income is 10,000. So far, the total for service income is 10. Oh. And then for September 20, 27, service income of another 20. So service income totals to 50,000. Now, you are to do the statement of changes in equity or statement of owner's equity. Wait, I'll have to wait. The table has dried up, so I cannot make my statement of owner's equity. I mean, I'm just using the table. Anyway, Nicole, later on the video, you'll find the format that I have suggested for that I'm using. If you want to use the format for the statement of for the income statement, that's fine. And this. What's the name of the business again? Property appraisal. Property appraisals. Ours are don't know property appraisal, sir. Okay. Appraisal. This, this name is oh no statement of equity owners equity for the month of September oh, for the month eh? yeah because it's just for the month of September so we begin with capital Reduces uh, Arzadon Capital. The date is September 1. God, I have to erase again. I don't have to get this right up. Wait. Again, the net income, sir. Forty-one six fifty. Wait. For this to dry up, uh, I cannot get right on the table because it's still wet with alcohol. My tissues. No, because the alcohol will remove the ink marks on the whiteboard marker. It's almost time. Don't forget to double double rule the values. Double rules are. Oi. I mentioned this already before. 
Double rule. You underline it twice. Ah, double rule. Ah, so double rule. Yeah. Ready? Yes, sir. Please, you must come to me. The only ones to be involved in this in this transaction that we have, the ones that you need to, to look into our capital withdrawals and the net, the net income that we computed earlier. Ah, uh, wala nang increase in owner's equity, sir. Of course, that will come out in the computation already. I'm referring to the Ay, account Joe, title. Ay, Joe, kaya pala ka nakuhahanapin din. <laughs> oh my God. No, the increase or decrease in owner's equity comes out right after you have computed for um, net income, deducted with withdrawals, additional investments. That's when you could gauge whether there is an increase or decrease in owner's equity. If the value yielded is a positive value, that means that the equity is increased by a particular amount. If the value computed is a negative value, then the equity will be decreased by that amount. Ready, ready? Yes, sir. We're doing it together, Abaha. I'm not doing it ahead of time. So we have the same time. Oh my God, the mouse fell. Oh, my God, the mouse fell. I show now my word. Uh, before I do, what's your computed capital at the end of the month? On fifty thousand. At the end of the month? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Forty-one. What's the question, sir? What's the capital? What's Arzadon capital at the end of the month? What do you mean? What do you mean? Look, people, look. Ah, sir. Uh, name of the business. Name of the financial statement. Yeah. Okay. For the month of September. Arzadon Capital on September 1 is 150,000. Oh. I hope you can see it clearly there. 150K. Mm, then from the income statement, you were able to compute for net income at 41,650. This is the income, the net income or the profit that we computed from the income statement. Then we are going to deduct withdrawals of 5,000 pesos. So that's 41,650 minus 5,000. The answer is 36,650. And since it's a positive amount, that means that owner's equity has been increased. Therefore, at the end of the month, our Zedon capital on September 30 is 186 186 That's the number one to be added by that increase in owner's equity to arrive at 186650. Akala ko sir 150 minus 400 650. No, what, what? What will you deduct from owner's equity? One, 150? <laughs> the 150, sir, less net income. Yung ginagawa ko, so mali pala. Net income is actually an addition to equity. <laughs> if it were a loss, like net loss, then of course it's going to be deducted from equity. But since, but since it's, an, it's a profit, it's a positive value, so it's going to be added. The only deduction that's going to be char uh, reflected on the state of owner's equity is the withdrawal. In this transaction involving the name of Arzadon, it's only withdrawal, a withdrawal that's going to be charged as a deduction. Questions? Well, let's try to have something like this on Thursday. 
Because in the QA, I just might ask to make you, I just might ask you to make something like this. In the QA, you might be making income statements, statement of owner's equity, balance sheet, who knows? Report account form, balance sheet, who knows? Can they open notes, sir? Open notes? No. Thursday, sir, open notes. I on Thursday, yes, yes, yes. Thursday. I thought you're referring to the QE. Then, sir. No, 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 no way. So I'll now end the call again. Have on Thursday. This is going to be our activity, and come next week we can continue working on this activity. Goodbye and thank you. Goodbye and thank you. Goodbye and thank you, sir.